Hi everyone, welcome to Newton's Laws, and we're going to be talking about objects moving in systems today. So this is when we have multiple objects with forces that are acting on them with uh, net forces. So this gets a little bit confusing because some objects can be going different directions and things like that. So let's look at this first problem. Find the acceleration and tension for the picture on the right. M1 is 3.1 kilograms and F M2 is 4.4 kilograms. First, find the tension. All right, so let's look at this problem here. Uh, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to draw a free by drag diagram for both of these. Actually, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to change the color of this because I don't like that red. It's a little bit uh, blinding. So the, when I look at the free body diagram, we should know that there's going to be a force of gravity going down for this one. We're going to call that 31 newtons. And there's a force tension going up. We don't know what that force of tension is. When we look at this one, we know there's a force of gravity of 44 newtons. While there is going to be a force of tension of this one, uh, which we don't know as well. But we do know these two forces of tension are equal to each other. Okay. Uh, next thing we should know is, and this is where it's a little confusing, is we know this block is going to accelerate upwards. And this block is going to accelerate downwards like this. So it's a little confusing. So what I like to do is I like to put this, these problems are kind of difficult because there's multiple things moving in different directions and one's going up, one's going down. So I like to put everything into one plane, one dimension. So what I do is I kind of put this one all the way up here and this one all the way over here. I kind of like make it sideways so it's in one dimension, it's easier to solve. So I'm gonna kind of draw it like that. What we have here, this is the 3.1 kilogram and then it's connected to the 4.4 kilogram. And then I'm gonna just draw the forces. So the force of gravity, I'm going to draw gravity going to the right. I know that's a little weird, but I just find this makes things so much easier. And the force of tension getting pulled this way, while the force of tension is the equal but opposite. And this one over here, force of gravity, whoops. Force of gravity, which is equal to 31 newtons. Draw that again. Okay. And now that we have that, what I like to do is we're going to first find the acceleration. When we find the acceleration, we're going to be looking at the whole system like this. We're going to be looking at the whole system because they're both going to be accelerating and they're both going to be accelerating at the same rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sum of all forces in the X is equal to mass times acceleration in the X. Because that's how we have it drawn. Everything's in the X. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to call it negative force of gravity one plus force of tension minus force of tension because going to the left plus, I'm going to call that force of gravity 2, is equal to, and what's accelerating? They're both accelerating. So this is going to be m1 plus m2 and the acceleration of that. So let's plug things in. Negative 31, these cancel out so we can ignore that. And then it's going to be plus, this one's 44, is equal to m1, which is point, no, not point, 3, point 0.1 plus 4.4 times acceleration is 13 is equal to 7.5a. And then we get a is 13 divided by 7.5, 1.73 meters per second squared. Okay. Now, for the next part, it says find the force of tension. I'm going to do this in a different color. So what's important to know is when we try to find the force of tension, we're only going to be looking at one free body diagram. Let me do it orange. So we could either look at this free body diagram, or we're going to look, we could look at this free body diagram. We know the acceleration is going to the right over here, 1.73 meters per second squared, but we can't do both because then these two will just cancel out. That being said, I'm going to be doing it with this, with this one on the right. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer, but. I'm just going to do the one on the right. So again, let's do the same thing. Sum of all force in the X equals mass times acceleration in the X. But we're only going to be looking at this right free body diagram. So we have force of gravity minus force of tension is equal to M1, or, or that's M2, I guess, and then acceleration. So we have force of gravity, 44, minus force of tension is equal to M2, which is 4.4, times acceleration of that, which is 1.73. And then we get force of tension is equal to uh, 4.4 times 1.73 minus 44 
and we get 36.4, okay? You would have gotten the same answer for uh, the other one, uh, but we get 36.4 newtons for this one, and it will be the same for the other one if you did it mathematically, okay? So a key thing to know, again, when you're doing finding acceleration, you look at the whole system, but when you're finding the force of tension, you have to isolate just finding one of the one of the free body diagrams. All right, let's continue. A 3.5 kilogram block is on a tabletop to a hanging block of mass 2.8 kilograms. Oh, sorry guys, I'm changing colors. <laughs> All right, 2.8 kilograms. The blocks are released from rest and allowed to move freely. If the table has a coefficient of friction of 0.4, find the acceleration and force of tension. Okay, so we know mu k is equal to 0 0.4. First thing I do, I just kind of draw the free body diagram. So we have force of gravity, 28 newtons, and then we have force of tension, which we don't know. And then I'm going to draw this. We have normal force, 35 newtons, force of gravity, uh, 35 newtons, sorry. Uh, there's going to be a force of tension. We also don't know that, but we know it's equal to this other one. And then we have a force of friction over here. We can actually figure out force of friction. It's going to be 35 times 0.4. So we get 14 newtons. Once we've drawn out the free body diagram, I'm going to do the same thing as last time, where I'm going to try to put everything in one dimension. So I'm going to draw it like this. Okay, so we have this one on the table, and we don't really have to change much for it. We know we know all the forces. Uh, let's just, I guess, draw it again. Force of gravity, 35. Force normal, 35. Force of friction, 14. And then force of tension, we don't know. And then we know this is going to be connected to this other block over here which we moved up here like that, but we're going to draw it like this. So force of gravity is going to go to the right this time, 28 newtons, trying to drag this both of both of these. And then we know there's going to be a force of tension, same but opposite directions. All right, so now let's try to figure this out. First, we're going to find the acceleration. And remember when we find acceleration, we look at the whole system. Okay, so we're going to do sum of all forces in the X is equal to mass times acceleration. So let me kind of just draw everything out. Negative force of friction plus force tension minus force tension plus force of gravity is equal to M1 plus M2 acceleration. Um, because they're both accelerating, force of tension cancel out. And let's see, negative 14 plus force of gravity, 28, is equal to 3.5 plus 2.8 times acceleration. And let's find what the acceleration is going to be. So 14 divided by, what's that going to be? 5, 6.3. That's going to give us an acceleration of 2.22 meters per second squared. Okay. And now for part B, remember when we're trying to find tension, we have to isolate them and we could only use one of them. We should only be using one of them. So I'm going to isolate... And I'm just going to use this free body diagram right here to figure out what the force of tension is. So let's look at that. You could have used the other one, doesn't matter, but you have to isolate for one. So we're going to do force of gravity, which is 28, minus force of tension, which we're looking for, is equal to mass. Mass of this one is 2.8, and acceleration we found is 2.22. Now let's do a little bit of math and figure out what that force of tension is. 2.8 times 2.22 minus 28, and we get 21.8 newtons. Okay. Hope that made sense to all you guys. All right, let's move on. All right, similar problem, but now we're going to have uh, less values here. So let's look at this. We have a mass M1 is on a frictionless surface. The mass is connected by a string weight of mass M2. Sorry, doing multiple things again. Find the acceleration of objects, find the tension in the string. Okay, so pretty much same kind of deal here. Let's kind of immediately just kind of draw it out first. We have it like this, and this that one is going to be put in the air like that. So we have M1. This is going to have 
m1g, that's the force of gravity. Normal force, same thing. M Fn is going to be equal to m1g. Um, oh, it's on a frictionless surface. Great. So then we have a force of tension dragging it. But at the same time, we have another one over here. Force of gravity, we're going to be drawing it to the right, which is going to be equal to m2g. And then we have force of tension like this. Okay, again, when we're looking for acceleration, we're looking at the whole system. So let's do that. Sum of all force in the x is equal to mass times acceleration in the x. We have, uh, I guess we'll go from right to left. Force of gravity minus force of tension plus force of tension is equal to m1 plus m2, the acceleration. These two cancel out, and this Fg is M2g. M2g is equal to M1 plus M2 a times A. So we can say that acceleration is equal to M2g divided by M1 plus M2. Okay, hopefully you guys were all able to do that. Part B now says find the tension. So again, we have to isolate for one of these. Uh, they'll both give us the right answer, but we have to isolate. So I'll, again, I'm going to isolate for this one to find what the force of tension is. So I'm going to do, let me do this um, over here. Sum of all force in X is equal to mass times acceleration in X. So now we know the force of, oh, actually, let me do it with the other one because the other one's slightly easier. Uh, again, it doesn't matter, but it's slightly easier. So I'm going to do the other one, but you could do whichever one you want. So let's look at this free body diagram right here, like this. And if we look at the sum of all forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration, we see there's only one force in the x direction, which is force of tension. And that's going to be equal to the mass of this one, which is m1 times acceleration, which was given to us, which is m2g divided by m1 plus m2. So final answer, force of tension is going to be m1 times m2 g divided by m1 plus m2. Okay, if you would have done the other one, uh, you would have gotten the same answer, but it would have been a little bit longer because there are other forces and things like that. But that's how you get these answers. Okay, now let's look at the last one. This is the hardest one. Uh, but hopefully you guys are getting the hang of how to do problems like this. So let me just change my ink first. Okay. Two blocks are connected by a rope and are at frick or at friction at rest on a frictionless plane. Which way do the block accelerate and what is that acceleration? What is the tension in the rope? Okay. So I guess we should start out with drawing a free body diagram. So we have force of gravity straight down force of tension like this, force normal like that, okay? Force of gravity, straight down, force normal, straight up, force of tension like this. And I guess let's, should we start um, trying to figure some of these out? Or maybe, maybe I'm gonna draw it out first. So let me draw all this out. Again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on one plane, so we have this one over here. And when we rotated this one, we're going to rotate it like this. So now the force of gravity is going to look something like this. Force of gravity, uh, 1,000 newtons. Then we have force of tension going to the right. We don't know what that is. And then we have normal force like this, force normal. Uh, and then I guess that's pretty much it. And then now we connect this one to the other one, 50 kilograms. So this one is rotated this way. So the force of gravity is going to be rotated like this. I know it's kind of strange looking, <laughs> but this is equal to 500 newtons. Force of tension going this way. And then force normal again, going up like this. Okay, so let's start figuring some things out. Uh, what first what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what these things are in the X and Y direction. So force of gravity X, uh, we know this angle is 30 degrees and force of gravity Y. So force of gravity X is going to be 1000 times sine of 30 
which is going to give me 500 newtons. And the force of gravity Y is going to be 1,000 times cosine of 30, 866 newtons. What I should also know is normal force is going to be equal to this force of gravity in the Y. So this is also 866. It's not really important, but why not since we have it? And now let's get this angle here. So we know this angle is 53.1 degrees. So let's find what the force of gravity in the X is for that one and force of gravity in the Y. So 500 times sine of 53.1 giving us 399.84. So I'm just going to put 400 newtons. And force of gravity in the Y is going to be 500 times uh, cosine of 53.1. And we get 300 over here. So this is going to be 300 newtons. Again, we know that the normal force is also going to be 300 newtons. All right. Now that we have all that, let's see if we can figure this out. The acceleration. So again, when we're looking at acceleration, we're looking at the whole body here. So let's look at this. Sum of all forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration x. Because again, it's going to be moving it either to the right or to the left when we look at this picture. Okay. So look at. let's look at everything in the x. We have... Negative force of gravity in the x1, I'm going to call that 1. And then plus force of tension, minus force of tension, uh, plus force of gravity in the x, I'm going to call that 2, is equal to m1 plus m2 times their acceleration, the x. So let's start plugging things in. Minus 500, these two cancel out, plus 400 is equal to 100 plus 50 kilograms times acceleration. And now let's find acceleration. Negative 100 divided by 150. And we get negative 0 0.667 meters per second squared. So what we know is it's going to be accelerating this way to the left. So it's going to be going down that way, up this way. Next, part B says, what is the tension in the rope? And again, by now we should know when we're trying to find tension, we need to isolate one of the diagrams and try to solve it with that one. So I'm going to just do this first one over here. Okay, Doesn't really matter, but that's what I'm going to do. Now let's look at this. Sum of all tensions in the X, so sum of all force in the X equals mass times acceleration. Ten so we have force of tension going to the right and the force of gravity in the X going to the left is equal to the mass M1 times acceleration. Ft, we don't know. That's what we're looking for. Force of gravity x, 500. Mass of this one is equal to 100. And we found out the acceleration is it's going to be going uh, negative 0.667. So now let's try to find force of tension. 100 times negative 0.667 plus 500, which is going to be 433.3. Okay. And we would have gotten the same answer if we would have done the other one. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I know this was a bit of a hard one, but I hope it made sense. And if not, uh, watch it again. Thanks, guys.